Hey guys, so I went to a hackathon yesterday at UT Arlington and I thought I'd show you guys the project that I worked on. So I created a React Native application. I worked in a group of with three other people on it. And here's what it looks like right here. I'm running it on iPhone emulator and just as a side note, they just um, changed what the emulator looks like. So now on the, um, you can actually see the phone itself, which is kind of interesting. But anyway, the goal of this app, and actually before I talk about the app itself, if you're not sure what a hackathon is, um, this is something where schools, usually universities host, where they give you either 24 hours or 36 hours, um, where you're basically, it's like a lock-in, where you're just like locked into a room, and you code for 24 hours or 36 hours on an idea, build something, and you present, and there's prizes and stuff. So let's take a look at what we ended up building in 24 hours. This hackathon was 24 hours. So the goal of our application and uh, the theme of this was social impact and um, natural disasters. So for us, what we were trying to build was something that um, was kind of like an Airbnb, a donation Airbnb. So when a natural disaster happens and people don't have homes to stay in, um, people might want to be donate their homes to allow people or churches or other places that want to be able to basically um, give up their home say hey you can come stay in my home for now so like a marketplace where people like hosts which would donate um, their house or some room to like let people stay there that need to stay there um, and on the other side are people that need help which we're calling the guests um, that would like to stay that need help. So this is what the application looks like. Um, it's built in React Native, and uh, with, this is our home screen. We made a little logo right here, and then we have two buttons, hosts and guests. So to start off, and um, if you click on guests, you can see a little bit um, of all the different houses that you could possibly view. Of course, this is all dummy content because it's a hackathon. Um, and you can see what they have available. So at this house, I could see that they have eight rooms that I could possibly stay at um, if I need, if I wanted to. And they have a shower and food available to help out. Maybe this one only has shower, and you can see the different things that they have. So I click on this, and we made another little screen here. This was a list view of cards, and the layout here is actually using something called Native Base, um, which I for all the components and stuff. So here we had another screen where it was just like a more description about this if you want to put more information as a host about what your house offers. And then here at the bottom as a guest, I can request housing from this guy. So I can say, let's say I have a kid with me and uh, me and my kid want to go stay at this house. I can put we request housing for two people and I can request housing. And we made a little alert that pops up that says, hey, you've been added to the host list and please wait and uh, for that person to confirm. So that's it, that's all a guest can do basically. And then I'm gonna refresh the application. Now you can see, I'll show you what it's like to be a host. So hosts, we have a little form here that you can fill out to actually create the shelter. Um, you'll notice here we actually don't have an image, place to upload images, but you saw images over here. Like if we saw a guest. Um, we just basically have dummy data here for now because we couldn't because we have so little time, that's how we cut corners. Um, we have this little form you can fill out to create shelters. And then we have this other, you can see this is a little nav bar at the bottom um, between this and uh, this. This page right here is the actual, once a guest would like to stay in your home, um, you can see who has requested to stay there. And you can either accept or you can decline them. So maybe I would like Valerie to stay, or this is not, this this right here is the actual name of the home, the person's name. So David Park, at David Park's house, John Doe would like to stay. So John Doe would like to stay at David Park's house. And of course you see we have some dummy data here. So I can say no, I don't want him to stay, but I want him to stay. Um, and this is using GraphQL, so you do see the amounts. They should update, so Let's see, I'm gonna go click on, I don't know if it's this house. Let's accept this kid. I don't know if that was the house that, that was for. 
So as you can see, it was a little buggy, a little static. Four, eight. Theoretically, we should make a request for three. It should pop over there. Um, I don't know if it's still working. I basically had to like get this working last minute. Mm, looks like something's wrong. But it's supposed to pop up over there when I make a request. It actually does work, but it looks like a little template. But anyway, that's what we presented. Um, there's a lot of things wrong with it. Um, and we have the thing is you have such a short amount of time to make it. Um, I did make this with GraphQL and I used my uh, Node.js server so I can show you guys the code. So this is the back end right here. Um, there's a lot more features that I wanted to add on to this but just ran out of time. I actually ended up only sleeping for like two hours of those 24 hours and I just got exhausted. So the code is super sloppy and uh, kind of hacky. So I actually didn't even bother with authentication as you saw. The way I do it is I'm storing um, basically the user's ID in async storage and then I'm passing it uh, the guest ID and the donor ID. So right here, like when I click that, I just set the guest ID to two. Or I think I'm hard coding it to one. Um, oh look, it does update here. So it actually does update. You see how it's one and five now? Oh, you know what I think the problem was? I wasn't uh, refreshing, I was it basically invalidated the cache is what I think happened. Okay, anyway, notice how they don't log in, they just go directly to this page. We actually created login pages, but so it didn't take time, the people logging in and not waste as much time. Um, we just basically hard coded that. And so we get that in the header, that's how we know who the guests and the donors is. And this is just my regular Node.js server here. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos on GraphQL, you know this is how I like to do things. I use join monster. Here are my tables. So the donor, name, email, password. You didn't see me create any donors. Basically, we just put donors in the database. This is the model for it. Guess we are just doing um, name and phone number. The idea is they log in with their phone number, kind of how like Snapchat or some other companies do it. And then a request, when you request a room, you can say, um, how many rooms you want um, and then you can say whether the person was accepted or not and then touched and viewed these were for other things I wanted to uh, also do push notifications and stuff so it actually like when I accept a dude I want the other person to get a notification but didn't get that working in time um, and then shelter here are all the fields for that um, yeah, we use a PostgreSQL database and resolvers are pretty standard stuff. Here's my schema. Um, regular stuff going on here have different GraphQL types and I'm using how I like to do errors in this. Even though I have no error handling in the front end, I did write it like this in case I wanted to end up wanting to do it. Um, and then my resolvers are pretty much what you'd expect. And I wanted to do some subscriptions, but it just was not working. Um, for me at that time and I had, it was on a crunch so I ended up just taking that out but I ended up using join monster that made it nice and easy and I also had to end up like writing some of my own queries because it was taking too long to try to figure out with how it would work with SQLize and stuff and I was too tired um, here's the front end so like I said it was made with react native and we're using the uh, Apollo client on the front end and we're using native base for the um, UI. So you can see I grab all these components from this native base library. Um, and yeah, we're using React. I tried a new router actually. Um, so I've never tried the, I think it's in this index page. Yep. I've never used uh, React router native before. I've only ever done React router DOM. And I liked it. It worked pretty well. I didn't notice really any too many big differences. Um, to create this little back button, that was kind of interesting. See this back button here? What we did is we ended up just wrapping a container around these routes so that way the header is always there. And then history.goback is how you actually um, do, like, basically pop back in history. And then I have to actually create a history object so I can access it. And I create a history object here, and it's a memory history for a React Native. Um, we can see the different pages we have and you notice there's this thing called like guest register we actually coded up um, the, this page 
but you notice what I did is on the component wheel mount, I said, just set the guest ID right here and then go to the next page. Because we're like, ugh, we wasted time actually coding this up. And then I was like, at the end, like, let's just skip it. Because like watching someone log in is not that interesting. So we just had them click on component wheel mount and jump to the next page. But there's a ton of other things I wanted to do with this application, but I just ran out of time. I, I think the one thing that hurt me at this hackathon is I actually tried to do way too much. And I should have tried to like nail down focused more. I tried to do too much and couldn't get enough working. Um, so next hackathon I'm going to try to get more focused. But this is the idea. We didn't end up placing in the top five. Um, we're not sure if we got any sponsored prizes. Um, so companies sponsor these places. One of the companies we were um, thought we had a chance of winning was Allstate. Allstate had a disaster um, relief challenge where you did something related to a disaster. Ours was supposed to help in disasters where people could stay in houses while their home was destroyed or whatnot. Um, but we're not sure how well we did. But I, this code is up on GitHub if you want to see any of it. Um, I'll put links in the description below if you want to check out what we did. But this gives you an idea of what you can make in 24 hours. Um, so that's a very, it's very hard to create something good in 24 hours. Um, but this is what we had ended up doing. So thanks for watching guys. I'll see you later.